So far, we've been able to derive three spectroscopic term symbols. One of these was a singlet S. The second, singlet D. And the third was the triplet P. So one thing to notice is that encoded in the term symbol is information about both the orbital angular momentum and the spin angular momentum. We can write the term symbol in two parts in the upper left hand corner as a superscript. We have the spin multiplicity, which as you recall is 2s plus 1. That's going to be the spin multiplicity is in the upper left hand corner. And the main body of the term symbol is capital letter, uh, capital Roman letter. It tells us information about the total orbital angular momentum. So we can kind of write that as a capital L, but it's going to be a symbol that represents that total angular momentum. In the case where the total angular momentum L is equal to zero, that's going to correspond to a S orbital. So this S here tells us that the angular momentum, uh, orbital angular momentum, has a value of zero for that particular system. In this case here, D corresponds to a large L orbital angular momentum of two. So that's just, the D here just tells us this, this L is equal to two. In our third particular case, the L value for the term is going to be one. So when L is equal to one, we use a term symbol of a P. So the kind of correspondence here, if this was a small L, and we wrote S, D, and P as small Roman letters, we would recognize that they correspond to orbitals. So this is just more information about how we would term uh, orbitals with reference to just a single electron. So this would tell us, a uh, small letter would tell us the uh, total angular momentum, the orbital angular momentum, small l, for one particular electron that was in that orbital. So we're just going from one to many, we go from small letters to capital letters. But we also can add information about a third and important uh, quantity, quantum quantity, is this value j. And j can be thought of as the vector sum of the orbital angular momentum, L, and the spin angular momentum, S. So this is this term arises from what we call spin orbit coupling. So the, the fact that we have two different types of angular momentum, they can interact. They, they will interact more and more as the atomic number increases. It's generally relatively small if the atomic number is 30 or below. And then, but as you get to very heavy atoms, this interaction becomes incredibly important. But so we also are interested in this value J. So let's see if we can derive the J values for the terms we have here. Because once we have that, we put the value of J as a subscript down to the right. It's a final step of writing a complete term symbol. Suppose we are trying to find the J value for our first term. Well, we notice in this particular case, the spin multiplicity is one. So that tells us that the value of big S is going to be equal to zero. What is the value of L? Well, since it's an S as a symbol right there, that tells us that L is equal to zero. And when we write out the, uh, the exact values of this, it goes, you think of it as J goes from the absolute value of L minus S up to L plus S. Don't we need the absolute value there? But it gives you the idea of what's going on from we have their difference. As long as it's a, we're looking at a positive non-negative value here, and it goes up to L plus S. So these are going to be the possible J values. Well, since S and L are only zero, 
goes from zero to zero. So that tells us there's only one J value possible, and that's going to be equal to zero. So the complete term symbol here, we would have a zero. In the case of 1D, the singlet D, because the spin multiplicity is equal to 1, we work back that the total spin S has to be 0 in that case. I'm starting to recognize this is what happens when you have a singlet. But, uh, so S is equal to 0. But now for L, this symbol is a D, which tells us the total L, the uh, total orbital angular momentum is going to be equal to 2. So now we have the situation. <clears throat> we can go from L minus S minus 2 up to 2. We see that, again, because of the fact we have a single here, there's going to only be one possible value of, of J. So it's going to be 0 plus 2 is equal to 2. So our total symbol would be singlet D and then the 2. So those are the only possible J values for those symbols. Once we get to the, the triplet P, we notice that since it's a triplet, the value of S had to be equal to 1. So this S equals 0 goes to the 1, S equals to the 1. When we have a 3, it's going to tell us that the total spin is equal to 1. What about L? Since we have a P here, it tells us that the L is equal to 1. So now we actually get something interesting happening in terms of having more than one possible J value. Because if we have L minus S, we have 0. At the upper end, we have S plus L, which is 2. So it's going to have 0, 1, 2. So we have three possible P values. So we have triple of P. Uh, zero, you have triplet P1 and triplet P2. So now that we've worked out the values of J, we put J as a subscript on the right hand side. And then if we have different values, each of these corresponds to a different exact uh, term symbol. Thank you for your attention. Have a good one.